Cool, an absolutely beautiful day this today, and you join me at Orchid Lakes in Oxfordshire again, which is the same venue that I fished last month. But today, what we're going to be doing is fishing on the surface, which is one of my favourite tactics. Now, I've already walked around the lake, and there's quite a few fish on show out in the middle, but I'm fairly sure in an hour or so's time, we might see those fish coming into close quarters where we'll have a better chance of, of selecting some of the bigger ones from amongst them. To begin with, what I want to do though is just talk through some of the tackle and tactics that are used when I'm fishing on the top because it is most definitely one of the most exciting forms of carp fishing out there. For the most part of today then, I'm going to be fishing at close quarters where the aim is going to be to try and select out the bigger fish. And to do this effectively, you need an awful lot of patience. It's all about walking around the lake, selecting the best areas to do it from, and then baiting consistently and drawing those fish in close. It's not going to be easy. It does take a lot of time. It's probably going to look a lot shorter and easier on film than it actually is in person. But I'm down here for a few days now, so um, the two areas that definitely take me fancy at the moment are the all alone swim, because there, there's been nobody fishing in there for a couple of days and yesterday there was certainly one or two bigger fish that looked half decent in there and the other area that's taking me fancy is the bay swims because certainly in an afternoon when the sun really does get warm you always get a few fish cruising in there plus also that area and the all alone there's definitely some areas that I can hide away behind bushes and uh, be as stealthy as I possibly can. Now on the tackle side of things I'm going to keep it really simple and I don't want to be using a nice short rod to do this. I know I'm going to be poking my rods through bushes and trying to keep stealthy but when you're using a short 6 foot, 8 foot rod or 10 foot rod, honestly the fish don't always come that close so the extra length of rod it really does come in handy. So I'm going to be using one of the 12 foot extremity rods and this is loaded with a reel that's got 15 pound main on straight through. I'm going to be using Avid Outline straight through because there's a lot of weed out there and I know from using Outline over the last 18 months or so it's a super strong line and it's definitely perfect for the weed because when these fish are going to pick the bait up they're certainly going to go powering through some of the weed that's about. So you need super confidence in, in the gear that you're using and I've definitely got a load of that in the 15 pound Outline. On the end of the line I'm going to be using a size 6 hook which is an intermediate size but there's a lot of weed about so too small a hook will give me less control you know, if I do hook something whilst if I use too big a hook obviously it results in no bites at all so it's a bit of a balancing game this so we'll see how it goes and I may change to a different size if need be. For bait I'm going to be feeding the fish a mixture of DNA's best in floats as well as dog mixer and on the hook I have a few different options ranging from pop-ups which you may use raw or trimmed down as well as softened dog biscuits. So that's it when it comes to the tackle and tactics side of things and as I said a few moments ago this method is mostly down to having the patience and perseverance to, to follow things through and to draw those fish into close quarters. And the footage that I've got for you now has not just been put together in 5 or 10 minutes, it's taken quite a while to do it but I'm sure you'll agree it's a fantastically exciting way of fishing. This is a swim known as the All Alone, it's a little arm of the main lake and on a warm day like today you often get a lot of fish that come in here. And there's quite a few in here now, just below all the surface scum that's come off the weeping willows. And um, the problem is though, there's a set of Canadian geese down there with the babies. There's a coot down there as well. And that's why you can hear that warning sound from the coot. Um, when people turn around to you and they say that birds don't communicate with one another and they don't um, communicate with the wildlife well, watch carp and birds on a pressured lake like this because they definitely send out warning signs to the fish via sound and little tweets that they do. But there's carp down here and they are taking mix at the moment. I just hope that uh, those birds have had a good feed and there's a few baits still down there for the fish. But I'm going to try and coax them into this corner down here because uh, at the moment they're mostly out in the middle just under the scum, you probably can't see without your polarising lens on but um, trust me there's a few out there, there's a couple of good ones as well so let's have a go and see if we can get them in close I've, what I've done is I've put a, a trickle of um, mixers out to where the fish are virtually on top of them and then just made a nice little light path down into this corner where I put the majority of the baits but these birds at the moment are currently having most of them so as soon as they've fed themselves and, and they're gone hopefully there'll still be a few there for the fish it's going to be hard work because it's warm but I'll give it a go I'm determined to catch one off the top before it leaves well, the tactics worked I've got them in quite close now and uh, I bet you another 20 minutes or so. 
I'll be able to get quite close, literally underneath me, my feet, where it'll be a lot easier for me to select, select out the bigger one. And there are some 30s in my experience as well, so I'm getting excited. Now I've got to get myself into position, which is under these trees here. And there you go. There's some fish down there. How close are they? Taking me about half an hour, but I've now got them to where I want them. And I can hopefully pick out the one I want if I'm getting real close. It's still not as easy as it looks though, trust me. I will give it a go. This is super exciting fishing though, it's one of my favourite forms of angling. Look at all there. Mega. Just hooked one, close quarters. Couldn't get the take on film, sorry. What a bomb, right. Again, absolutely blisterer. And we've gone through to the other side of the lake now. But I'll do my best to get it back. Hooked him right close in. Super exciting. 
got to be careful though because these uh, these little hooks I've got they can easily pop out well all's gone solid but all is not lost the key now is to not put too much pressure on the line and to not jerk the line too much let the fish make its own way out so I'm, I'm, I've got some pressure on the line I can feel whether it will move or not and uh, gentle little jerks not too too strong sometimes move the fish but sometimes you just got to let the fish work its own way out and that's what I'm going to probably have to do I think Let's take the bail arm off, give it some slack hope it moves got it moving again for how long I don't know but I'll do my best so much weed about down here it's grinding deep into it all the time feel the rod creaking, the line creaking everything that's the one thing I'll say about this avid outline it is really strong line deep in again grinding away hope it gets its head stuck in weed yeah, it's not that bad a fish actually that isn't it's not that small it's not a monster but It's taking me probably two hours of baiting the area with, with mixers. I came for a run around here earlier and saw there's some fish here and they were out in the middle and I baited the, the middle area with the mixers. Had a few problems with the geese and ducks but got them closer in and just got them down here after about two hours of feeding the area and that's what can be done. You know, it's a tactic that and it takes a lot of patience to do it. You know, heron stalking I call it because you sat there like a heron and uh, you know, it not, it's not everybody's cup of tea, I'll say that, but the, the, the effectiveness of it for selecting fish out, if you can get them really close in, is if you're on a water where there's 50s and 60s or whatever, you know, I've had fish to 45 pounds, nearly 46 pounds, doing exactly the same. A fish called Arnie from up in, uh, in North Lincolnshire from Manton Old Lake a few years back, uh, doing exactly this, and it's, it's so rewarding, it's so exciting as well. So let's have a look at this fish. Well, my persistence has paid off and after two hours of feeding the fish up, I selected this gorgeous 30 pounder out of the bunch. Just put up a great fight. Fantastic.
One of the most essential bits of kit for surface fishing is the catapult and this month's product plug is the Avid Carp Multi Catapult. This catapult can be used for all sorts of different baits like particles, boilies, pellets and mixers. It features an ergonomic camera robust handle and PFTE anti-twist technology which makes it virtually impossible to tangle. The elastic is strong and very hard wearing unlike other models which often last only a few months. I've been using mine for over 18 months now and it's still going strong and with the original elastic. Spare elastics and pouches can be purchased separately but for the catapult itself these retail at $17.99 although you can pick them up on the net for as little as £15 if you shop around. For further information on the multi catapult check out avidcarp.com I'm down in the end bay swim now and there's loads of fish down here. They're, uh, I mean it's a really warm area of the lake this is at the minute as well so um, it's not surprising that they're down here and they're right in close, they're right by the reeds. You wouldn't know they were there unless you crept along and had a good look. You could easily walk by them. But um, I've been watching them now for about five or ten minutes and there's definitely some big fish down here. I'm, I'm fairly sure um, there's, a, there's a couple of the, the A team members down here as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly feed the area with, with mixers, just trickle a few in here and there. It's about five o'clock now, I've just had my tea and I'm just having a wander around and um, I've got at least a couple of a couple of three hours until I, I need to get back so I'm going to spend a good time trickling these baits out and try and draw them in pretty close if I can. I've, I think there's an area round by the edge of the reeds there where I can get them in close. I've scattered a few baits out in the middle and then put a lot of baits in close where I want to try and get them to. So I've picked the area where I want to be and where I can hide away and still have a good chance of, of dropping a bait in close. You know, that's the, the key to um, what I'm trying to do here. And once they, they get a scent of an area where there's a good supply of bait, it'll um, hopefully draw a few more in. It's, it's good. It takes time, this method does it. It's about building the swim up. You've got to not put too much out to start with so you don't spook around the area, but you've got to trickle a few baits out there regularly to keep them interested and once you get that one fish taking bait then the message goes out to the other fish there's free food about and hopefully um, you know with a, a bit of time I can work this area and, and get them feeding so that's what I'm going to do is just trickle some bait out and, and try and draw them in close where I can pick out one of the better ones.
fish has weeded me off and uh, hopefully it's gonna make his way out but uh, that's a decent fish I'm just gonna give it a bit of slap and see if it kicks itself out of the weed and then I'll try and connect it again it's amazing how, how they can stick themselves in just a tiny little bit of weed and make it feel like it's loads of it there it might not be loads but it definitely feels quite thick I need the fish to to kick and then it starts to move itself then excitement now I'm back on the bank of uh, I've just looked at the fish and I'm fairly sure it's Delilah which is currently the biggest fish in the lake so that ain't too bad off the surface and there she is Queen of the lake Delilah 38 pounds and off the top 